welcome back to my normal type catch em all run of Reborn. While saying the full title might be tiring, the game isn't, so let's get right into it. Last episode, we defeated the poison gym leader Cory, though we didn't get a gym badge for it. Right away, there are two Pokemon we can get in the Barrel Ward before continuing. First, we go to the library from earlier. Here, Gothitelle will ask us for help cleaning up the books and papers on the library floor. Once we do, we're gifted the Soul Candle item, and we can get Gothita, bringing the total to 124 Pokemon. Next, with the Soul Candle item we just got, we can get one more ghost. We head back up to the Barrel Cemetery, near where we found Shuppet, and interact with a pumpkin. Thanks to the Soul Candle we just got, we're able to battle and catch Pumpkaboo, bringing the total to 125. As a thanks for completing the police side quest in the last episode, the Chief in Jasper allows us to take the Orphan Growlithe, bringing our total to 126. This Growlithe is always female, so I take it and a male fanpy from the field egg group to the daycare to get a Growlithe egg. I then bring this egg back to the police station to trade it to the sad officer for a different egg. This is known by the community to be called the Mystery Egg, and it offers a chance of one out of 18 different Pokemon to come out of it. Each of these 18 Pokemon cover all 18 types. Luckily for me, the egg I got is the normal type one, so we'll hatch it to see what it is a bit later. Next, I grab the Sunkern we bred in episode 2, and proceed to the newly opened North Obsidia Ward. In a house to the left, I trade it to an old man and get Furfru in return. This brings us to 127. This area also has an alleyway, so we enter it. We aren't able to move around much thanks to magma gang activity in the area, but we can still catch some Pokemon here. Here we're able to catch Esper, as well as Mightyena, bringing the total to 129. We can also now access the bougie ward of Reborn City, Lapis. Lapis has the final alleyway of the city, so we enter it. Though we got even less room to move around thanks to the Aqua Gang, we're able to catch Alolan forms of Raditza, Raticate, Meowth, and Persian. I'll be catching all the Alolan forms in this run, but they don't affect the total twice, so since we already caught the two pre-evolve forms, um, but not the evolve forms, this brings us to 131. We enter a house in Lapis and talk to the mother of the boy from the Drifloon and Scolipede quest. As thanks, we get another department store sticker. On the fourth floor, we can buy more consumable held items as well as a TM and some EV training gear. On the way out, my mystery egg hatched into Starly, definitely one of the best normal type lines in the game in my opinion, not including legendaries of course. This brings the total to 132. After a bit of grinding, Starly evolved into Staravia, bringing the total to 133. Back in Lapis, I enter the flower shop at the top. Here I get to do another tile puzzle like the one in the candy shop. As a reward for completing it, I get another fairy, Spritzy. This brings us to 134. After a conversation at the Lapis Gym, we're able to enter the Grand Staircase through the bomb spot. Inside there's a sprawling cave network, including wild Pokemon to fight. On the first basement level, we're able to catch Sandshrew, Diglett, Geodude, Graveler, Chingling, and a super high level Dunsparce for some reason. This brings us to 140. On the next floor down, I catch a wild unknown, bringing us to 141. In the basement floor, we talk to the big boss man of Meteor, then proceed to the left to fight Aster and Eclipse again. The good news of this fight is that we get to fight them with Victoria as an ally, so her fighting type centered team can help us out a bit. The bad news, however, is that all four of their Pokemon are strong rock types, so they resist all of our normal type moves. I had forgotten that Soul Rock and Lunatone came out first, so my plan to use Lopunny's Jump Kick for super effective damage didn't get me super far. Only Lunatone went down to Stark, leaving Soul Rock and Night Lycanroc. Since Crystal Cavern boosted Rock Slides kept coming, I thought Staravia's Intimidate might help even the playing field a little bit, but it still went down shortly after. Luckily, Victoria's Pancham helped me out and attacked Lycanroc, leading me to bring in Apon to stand by for Lycanroc to get knocked out. All that was left was Soul Rock and Day Lycanroc. 
So, I let functionally useless Apom go down to bring out Doduo. Hanchan luckily survived yet another hit and took a big chunk out of Lycan Rock, but both it and Doduo were not able to withstand the speed and power of the pair the next turn. I wanted Litleo to be the fodder for Victoria's Pikachu to Thunderbolt Lycan Rock or something, but it only faked out, making Litleo go down. Last on my team was Castform, who set up Rain then took out Lycan Rock. Rock moves under this field have a 25% chance of picking up either the Water type, the Grass type, the Fire type, or the Psychic type when used, similar to how Flying Press, Hawlucha's signature move, has two types. So luckily Soul Rock managed to roll a Fire type addition or a Water type addition, and Castform was able to survive, letting me barely scrape by. Cast form really did it again. Shocker. After feeling comfortable that we had such a great ally by our side, the next battle we have to do is against Victoria herself. Luckily, I had Doduo in the front to easily take out her OP Pancham, but Pikachu paralyzed it and took me out after I was only able to drop it to about half. I was a bit worried that Pikachu might paralyze the next Pokemon I, s I sent in, but Litleo came in and barely missed taking it out in one shot. So it was brought to about 35% health before Curlia came out. No flinch luck, so Litleo went down. Next was Apom, but an underwhelming Swift paired with unlucky two-hit Fury Swipes led it to go down to Curlia. Staravia took Curlia out, but thanks to Intimidate on her Choracat, couldn't deal much damage at all and went down. I sent in Lopunny with the plan to clean up, but Double Kick was just strong enough that it could take me out in two turns, even in spite of Cute Charm activating and making Choracat infatuated. Surprise, surprise, Cast Form was our only hope, and with Weather Ball, Victoria was defeated. My fault for having a team mostly consisting of baby Pokemon I was hoping to evolve at some point, but oh well. Luckily though, the hard work paid off as in a bit Apom evolved into Ambipom, and Doduo evolved into Dodrio, bringing the total to 143. Next, I begin a little side quest with the gangs that were blocking us off earlier. We actually would not be able to progress the main story in about 3-5 to five episodes by not doing this quest, so we might as well get it done now. I chose the Aqua Gang for this run, but you can also choose the Magma Gang instead if you'd like, and you'd get Weasel at the end of this first bit. Anyways, after beating the two at the entrance, we're able to join them in raiding an old lady's house? It's a bit weird, but if you've played this game, you know that it's very Praxis. Anyways, inside, there are a few quick battles with the rival gang, and we're able to take a Water Stone as well as Ponyta, which brings our total to 144. On a windy night, I enter the Lapis Alleyway to hang out with my gang, and I find Murkrow. I'm able to catch it, bringing the total to 145. Since this gym is notably tough, I had to do a bit of grinding before it. In the process, Staravia evolved into Staraptor, and Litleo evolved into Pyroar, bringing the total episode count to 147. This brings us to about 20% of all the available Pokemon in Reborn, so we're making some good progress. Woohoo! With the team that finally didn't look like Castform was the only member that could do anything, I finally entered the Lapis Gym and prepared for battle. Shelly tends to be the first gym leader in this game that really throws people, but with my team, I beat her the first try. Her prankster Illumis almost always goes for Rain Dance the first turn to weaken fire types. If only I had a strategy for that. Plan A was having Castform use Sunny Day, then having Pyroar sweep under Sunny Rainbow Field, but I didn't account for the fact that, well, Pyroar is faster than Castform, so it wasn't able to take out Illumis. Though, Pyroar was the only team member that benefited from Sun, so I, given that, I took away her field advantage and created my own, which was Rainbow, which is fine with me. Rain and field boosted Weather Ball took out Illumis, and I was hoping it would Anorith too, but we ended up trading flinches. Both Masquerain and Castform flinched. I was worried that Anorith and Masquerain would be able to knock out Castform the next turn, but while Masquerain did get a flinch, Castform did not, so Anorith was one-shotted with Weather Ball. Next she sent out Yen Mega, so I matched with Staraptor. Unfortunately, Castform ended up going down this turn, but Aerialis was able to take Yon Mega straight down to the red, so I sent in Lopunny to take it out. Unfortunately, during the next turn, Staraptor went down, so I had to send out Dodrio, leaving Lopunny and Dodrio to take out Masquerain. Luckily, that leaves her with only two Pokemon left, Volbeat and Araquanid. The spider was pretty quick work thanks to my flying moves, but the rainbow field went away. Luckily though, after just a bit of annoying recovery stall, her Volbeat finally went down and I was successful. As a reward for beating Shelly, we got the TM for Struggle Bug and the Cocoon Badge. Thanks so much for watching today's episode of Pokemon Reborn Normal Monotype Catch'em All Run. 
I might eventually shorten that title, but for now we're going with it because it's a lot of fun. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave me a comment, leave me a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, as I've heard people say, um, and come back for the next episode because uh, I'm enjoying making this series. It's a lot of fun, and I hope you're enjoying it too. So that's all for today, and catch the next episode. Bye.